Hello, everyone, and welcome to Kudlow. I'm David Asman, in for Larry Kudlow today. Well, the House is lining up with the Senate and voting to pass that $1.7, at least, trillion dollar omnibus monstrosity. One Democrat, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, voted no over defense funding in the bill, while nine Republicans actually voted yes for it. The bill now heads to President Biden's desk. Let's bring in Ohio Congressman Brad Wenstrup for more. Congressman, I first want to quote to you from Kim Strassel's column today in the Wall Street Journal. She writes, quote, if a satirist set out to describe a once admirable institution in decline, its members cheerfully passing off their laziness, secrecy, cowardliness, and graft as success, it'd be hard to compete with this week's Senate show. Now, that's tough. Uh, do you agree with her? Well, I think she's got some legs to stand on there, David. I really do. Uh, I'm very disappointed the way both the House and Senate have functioned, especially over the last few years. Uh, you know, the Senate really has not done much. And I, I just don't understand why Republicans in the Senate and, and against some in the House were even in favor of this. And this, this whole process is, is wrong the way that it has taken place. Look, you can take a bill like that, which we hate seeing. We should be doing our appropriations bills one thing at a time, because then if there's things in there that you want and are in favor of, then you can vote for them. But you do a bill like this. There may be some things in there you love, uh, defense, but there's just way too many things that are harmful to the country. And I think that that needs to be taken into consideration. And I'm just surprised in the Senate where the Republicans really have some clout because of the rules over there that they didn't act upon it. And so, look, we're about ready to take over the House. We have the responsibility to do things right, get our appropriations bills done right. But I don't know what the Senate will do from there. And so yeah. Kim has a lot of things to say. I read that article, David, and, you know, she's she's pretty hot. She's and there's the a lot of things to be said. Yeah, she's yeah. the best. And she's seen a lot of this. So for her to say it's the worst she's ever seen says a lot. Actually, the worst, I thought, from my own perspective, was Senator Senator McConnell. Now, he is the leader of the Republicans in the Senate. And he was saying that he was proud of the bill. I'm quoting him. Proud was the word he used, saying it achieved everything that Republicans represent. Really, do you agree with that? I mean, first of all, Republicans used to represent fiscal responsibility. I don't see anything that is fiscally responsible about this bill. Well, in, in total, it's not. Uh, now, he may be pointing to certain things that are within the bill uh, that are consistent with Republican ideals. I certainly got some things in the bill itself, but it wasn't enough to, to for me to vote yes, because the majority of the bill was just way out of hand, way out of line, not good for America currently, and certainly not good for the next generation. And if this is going to continue to be the, the trend, Kimberly Strassel is completely right that we have a real problem on our hands. And this once glorious institution is certainly struggling right now. And you know, the, the, the Senator McConnell, I don't mean to just beat up on Senator McConnell. There were a lot of other Senate Republicans that did what I think was horrible in, in terms of going along with this process. Uh, but he was saying that you either pass this thing or we have a government shutdown. And that's another thing that Kim Strassel was good at, saying there is a third option. You pass the CR, you send it into the next year when Republicans will take over the House. You guys would have more clout to argue and to debate and to take certain things out, maybe to put other things in. Senator Lee, though, was very close yesterday in getting a deal, bringing Cinema on, Democrat, well, now independent uh, Senator Cinema and Joe Manchin, uh, who has also occasionally voted in the right direction. Apparently they were on, but there was a last minute deal. Here's Senator Lee talking to Larry about it yesterday. I'm going to roll tape. Oh, we don't have the side. Well, Senator Lee was on yesterday with Larry Kudlow saying essentially what happened, that they were just inches to getting that deal passed until Senator Schumer offered something. Maybe someday we'll find out what it was to Senator Cinema. Uh, they, it, it was all focused around immigration and, and Title 42. What happened? What, was, what do you know about what happened yesterday, about, about those last-minute wheelings and dealings? I, I don't know what they are in detail. I just know that that happened. And, you know, that isn't necessarily uncommon. You know, how do you get one more, more person on a bill, et cetera? What is it going to take? That, that's been done throughout our history. 
but why are we doing all this in the last minute? And and look at the thousands of pages that are part of this bill that no one had a chance to read in 48 hours. Yeah. I don't know how you vote for something that you really don't have an opportunity to review. And well, you know, by the way, I, I really Congressman, forgive me for interrupting, but yeah. a lot of a lot of people didn't. They 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 had sent in their proxy. I, I understand there were about 230 active proxy letters uh, that went to this. Nobody wanted their fingerprints on a on a murder weapon. You know. Well, yeah, there were there's that's been going on uh, for the past year, and we are going to put an end to that proxy voting in the House of Representatives. I do give the Senate credit that they never instituted that. Um, but we are a much better body when we don't have uh, the proxy voting. But whether whether you're there or you're not, you can still get the bill, but do you have time to actually consume it and read it and go over it with your staff and look at the pluses and minuses? But we really knew so many of the minuses for some time. I mean, it was it's really disheartening to see how much money was being spent on pet projects that really didn't have to do with infrastructure or national no, security. Or our national health, which they were really, vanity. I think they we, were vanity they projects. They were vanity projects, uh, and there were two senators leaving: one Republican, uh, one Democrat. Democrat Pat Leahy, uh, Senator Shelby was the Republican. Senator Shelby got six hundred forty million dollars of these vanity projects. I mean, that's that's just absurd. And it, it, it you know, I, you know, I wish him well in his in his retirement. But this is this is a pretty shameful way to go out. Well, and it certainly isn't fair to the next generation of Americans that supposedly are going to have to pay for it. I don't know when we actually say we're bankrupt, uh, but we're getting closer and closer all the time. Again, I'm looking forward to it. I think in the House of Representatives, as far as Republicans go, we are determined and ready to go. And we're going to try and find ways that we get these, these bills done. We get them to the floor. We get them over to the Senate in time. The Senate can be working on theirs, but they really haven't been. They were just too interested in still going after Donald Trump, who is no longer yeah. the president of the United States, and other issues like that. Of course, that was in the House, too. And we're ready to do some work. I did not take this job to sit around and play these games. I, you know, I take my military career serious as a yes. doctor. I take that very serious, and I, I take the legislating very serious. Yeah. And we've been sidetracked every step of the way, we and we've sure got have. to start acting more like CEOs of a business that want to make things happen, that so that we function properly as the United States of America and set our priorities on things like our defense yeah. and and our budget. But and, where and move where forward. do re where do Republicans go from here? I mean, are are we just locked into this bill for the next year? Is there any kind of, of, of fiddling that you can do to, to, to cut here and, and, uh, and, and strike some things from, from what we were expecting to pay money on and, and maybe put back things like the 100 percent deduction, something that was very helpful for small businesses in America? Absolutely. We've, we've got to do those things like, like that and then just not appropriate some of the things that have been passed now. And, and draw that back. And you you mentioned the R and D expensing. Yeah. That's another tax on corporations at a Absolutely. time when our supply chain is reliant on China. That is the last thing we want to be doing. We need to allow uh, cures to be developed in health, and we need to make sure that we're providing and manufacturing the things that we need for our national security and our national health. And this takes it in the wrong direction completely. Yeah. And if people didn't recognize our supply chain problem due to COVID. I don't know that they ever will. Yeah, particularly going into a recession. I mean, most economists say we're going into a recession next year. And just as that's happening, they're pulling out some of the benefits for small businesses. It's, it's really disgraceful. But, Congressman, having said all that, have a very Merry Christmas, wonderful New Year. Thank you for your service, both in the military and as a doctor. We really appreciate you coming in today. Have a great holiday season. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for getting it. Absolutely. Appreciate Thank it. you very much.